Now, the 26th of December, the world will, of course, be marking the 30th anniversary of the Soviet Union's disintegration. It was on this day back in the year 1991 when the flag of the Soviet Union, or what was known as the USSR, was lowered for the last time over Kremlin. The USSR was the strongest communist force the world had ever seen. So what exactly brought the USSR to its end and how did the mighty empire fall apart? Our next report gets you all the details. The Soviet Union was a nation of intrigue, the most powerful communist force that ever existed, with the strongest conventional land-based military. It existed for 69 years spanned 11 time zones, covered 22 million square kilometers, and had 15 modern-day states as its constituent republics. On the 26th of December 1991, it disintegrated. <laughs> What caused the fall of the Soviet Union? It's hard to name one cause. The dissolution of the superpower was brought about by multiple factors. It helps to begin in 1985. Mikhail Gorbachev was named General Secretary of the ruling party. He tried jump-starting the stagnant Soviet economy, introduced two important policies. Glasnost, meaning openness, and perestroika, meaning restructuring. But instead of sparking an economic revival, these policies opened the floodgates to criticism. The Soviet apparatus started losing control of its bureaucracy, media and public. Communist officials pushed back against state policies. The media started publishing critical commentary and the people rose in revolt. By the end of 1989, Hungary dismantled its border fence with Austria. Pro-independence sentiment swept over in Poland. Estonia declared independence and the Berlin Wall was brought down. As the symbolic Iron Curtain fell, things began to change rapidly. Nationalist riots emerged in Georgia. The Lithuanian Communist Party declared independence, as did the Republic of Latvia. The next year, in 1990, a shortage of consumer goods began. It fueled inflation and sent the economy into a tailspin. Disgruntled Soviet republics began distancing themselves from Moscow. Armenia declared independence, as did Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. Amidst these dramatic changes across the Soviet landscape, a coup was launched. In 1991, hardline communists tried toppling Mikhail Gorbachev. Their efforts failed. But they weakened his political capital, sealed the fate of the Soviet Union, and propelled Boris Yeltsin to the forefront of Soviet politics. Most power structures stopped heeding Gorbachev's commands. They all started considering Yeltsin as their leader, a voice for change and transformation. He began acknowledging the right of Soviet republics to claim their independence. In September 1991, Yeltsin, along with Gorbachev, met U.S. Secretary of State James Baker to allow political reforms in a regulated manner, thereby effectively declaring the demise of the Soviet Union. In the months that followed, several republics signed agreements with Moscow to become independent states. And on the 26th of December 1991, the Soviet hammer and sickle was lowered for the last time over the Kremlin and was replaced by the Russian tricolor. Bureau Report, Weon, World is One. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.